Jesus, the third Sunday after Pentecost, is the Sunday within the octave of the Sacred Heart. There will be a conference for the ladies on Monday evening, that is tomorrow night at 7 p.m., so please put that on your calendar, conference for the ladies tomorrow at 7 p.m. Indian Taco Night will be this Wednesday, and also the Purgatorian Society members uh, offer their Holy Communion on the second Sunday, which is today, the second Sunday of the month for the opposed of the souls that were recommended the month by the Society. So today, please remember the following, Mr. Brendan Rollins, Joan Regner, and Thomas Caberline. So remember them in your offering of Holy Communion today. The epistle of Wendy read for today's Mass is taken from the epistle of St. Peter. Dearly beloved, be humble under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in the time of visitation, casting all your care upon him, for he hath care of you. Be sober and watch, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, goeth about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist ye strong in faith, knowing that the same affliction befalls your brethren who are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his glory, eternal glory in Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a little, will himself perfect you and confirm you and establish you. To him be glory and empire forever and ever. Amen. And the gospel, the holy gospel is taken from St. Luke, chapter 15, verses 1 through 10. At that time, the publicans and sinners drew nigh unto Jesus to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spoke to them this parable, saying, What man of you that hath a hundred sheep, and if he shall lose one of them, doth he not leave the ninety-nine in the desert, and go after that which was lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, lay it upon his shoulders, rejoicing, and coming home, calling together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my sheep that was lost. I say to you that even so there shall be joy in heaven upon the one sinner that doeth penance, more than upon ninety-nine just who need not penance. Or what woman, having ten groats, if she lose one groat, doth not light a candle and sweep the house, and seek diligently until she find it? And when she hath found it, call together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, because I have found the groat which I have lost. So I say to you that there shall be joy before the angels of God upon one sinner doing penance. Those are the words of today's Holy Gospel. Come to me, all you that labor and are burdened, and I will refresh you. Words taken from the book of St. Matthew. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. When we rep wish to represent a person as very amiable, we say of him that he has a good heart, a truly good heart. A good heart as much as such it is known as such begets affection. Because as the proverb says, love begets love. If we feel ourselves compelled to give our love to men who are of good heart, how much easier it is to give our love to the best of hearts. And that is the sacred heart of our Lord, whose feast day we just celebrated on Friday. Truly, we can say to know him is to love him. And his divine spouse, the Holy Church, well aware, has instituted the feast of the sacred heart of Jesus and calls us to venerate his heart in the most fervent desire and love. When our blessed Lord walked among us in this world, he had the best and most loving heart, especially towards his heavenly Father. He gave evidence to this by valuing the will of his heavenly Father above everything else and making the fulfillment of that will the one purpose of his life in this world. One day when the disciples brought him food which they had bought in the city and said before him, and they said, Rabbi, eat. He gave them the significant answer. He said, I have food to eat of which you know not. And then our Lord, knowing the disciples thought that someone else had brought him food to eat, our Lord explained to them further, he says, My food is to do the will of him that sent me, that I may be able to perfect his work. A man who is very hungry thinks of nothing else and wishes and seeks nothing else but how to procure that food. What our divine Savior thought of nothing else but to do the will of his heavenly Father. He came into the world and assumed our human nature to fulfill that will. 
He was born misery and for 33 years lived a life of poverty for no other reason than to do the will of his father. For he himself said, I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And it was the will of his heavenly father that our Lord should suffer and die for us. We know from his discourse on Holy Thursday that he was ready for the sacrifice. Our Lord said that the world may know that I love the Father and as the Father hath given me commandment that is to suffer and die, so do I. Again on Mount Olivet, O my Father, if it is possible, let this chalice pass from me nevertheless. Not as I will, but as thou wilt. How bitter, however bitter and how terrible the approaching death of the cross may have appeared to his human nature. Our Lord resigned himself to the will of his heavenly Father. He permitted himself to be scourged, to be crowned with thorns, to be buffeted, to be spit upon, to be mocked, to be nailed to a cross and finally die upon it, to fulfill his heavenly Father's will. St. Paul says he humbled himself, becoming obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And my dear faithful, can it be said of us with truth that we have a good heart, that we have a good heart towards God, our Heavenly Father, that we are willing and ready to do his holy will? It may be that one is irritable and easily excited to anger, and then that excitement says and does many things which are sinful. It's the will of God that one should subdue such anger and become meek and patient. Perhaps one has retained ill-gotten goods. It's the will of God that restitution must be made. Perhaps one is addicted to cussing, to blaspheming, or to sins against temperance and purity. Such habits must be given up because that is the will of God. Perhaps others have been careless in prayer, not listening to the word of God or receiving the sacraments. It's the will of God that they should overcome their slothfulness in God's service and fulfill their religious duties with greater fervor. We should examine ourselves and how we've complied with the will of God in the past in doing good and avoiding evil in order to know the will, whether we have rightly performed the will of God and whether it can be said of us that we have a good heart, a good heart towards God. Our Lord also had a merciful heart towards sinners. The gospel gives us numerous examples of such. He sat at tables and he condescended to eat with sinners, not to approve of their sin but that he might instruct them and convert them and help them to save their souls. He announced to, announced to Zacchaeus, who was a publican, who was stealing from the people. He announced to Zacchaeus his intention of coming and being a guest in his home. And thus, by our Lord's tender compassion and courtesy, he prevailed upon Zacchaeus to make restitution and bestowing half of his substance upon the poor. Conversing with the Samaritan woman, the sinful Samaritan woman at Jacob's well, he converted her and through her led many other of her countrymen to know the way of salvation. Though he was surrounded by the sanctimonious scribes and Pharisees, our Lord had compassion on the adulteress. He delivered her from their hands in order that he might free her from her guilt of sin. He defended the great penitent Mary Magdalene from the uncharitable judgment of the Jews and allowed her to anoint his feet and forgave her many sins. On the night of his passion, he looked sympathetically and sympathizing upon St. Peter after St. Peter had denied him three times. And he looked upon St. Peter and that poor cowardly apostle because of that look he went out and wept bitterly and repented of his sin. He had mercy upon the penitent thief in Calvary and promised him paradise. And finally, our Lord 
prayed for sinners as he died upon the cross. My dear faithful, we in our turn should imitate this kind-heartedness and charity. Our Lord has said, as I have given you an example, that as I have done, so do you all. We should have a good heart towards all men, especially towards sinners, and make every effort to save them by giving them a good example of what we are, that is, we are Catholics, and praying for their conversion. We are to be aware of scandalizing anyone by our bad words or bad deeds. Our Lord, dwelling in heaven, has the most perfect and loving of all hearts. In his glory, in his all loving, friendly, and condescending as he was when he was living in misery in this world. Christ prays for sinners in this world. Christ prayed much for during his earthly life, and he went into the synagogue, into the temple to pray. He watched and prayed during whole nights upon cold mountainside, and for whom he prayed for us, prayed for us sinners, that we might apply his merits to us and we can work out our salvation. Well, our blessed Lord now in heaven most assuredly prays for us. St. John assures us of this. St. John says, My little children, these things I have written to you, that you may not sin. But if any man sins, says St. John, we have an advocate with the Father who is Jesus Christ, the just. So we not only have the angels and the saints and the Blessed Mother to be our aid in our, by their prayers, but our Lord himself is our mediator and advocate with God the Father. Christ in heaven still has the most loving and tender of hearts. In St. Paul we have evident proof, evident proof of the love of God that he has interest in the lives of sinners. Because before St. Paul became St. Paul, his name was Saul. He was a bitter enemy of the Catholic Church. He persecuted the Catholic Church, the church that Christ established. St. Paul went out and designedly from Jerusalem to Damascus to search out Catholics and to take them bound, men and women, bound in chains into Jerusalem to be put to death. But on his journey, it came to pass that he drew nigh to Damascus. Suddenly a light from heaven shined round about him, and falling upon the ground, he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why dost thou persecute me? And he said, Lord, who art thou? And then St. Paul says, Lord, what should I do? Our Lord instructed Ananias to go to Saul and baptize him. This sinner the persecutor, number one persecutor of the Catholic Church, was converted, baptized, and saved not only his own soul, but countless souls of Jews and Gentiles, even to today. On the last judgment, we will be astonished when we learn the excess of love which our Lord in heaven has shown toward poor sinners upon earth as well as a superabundance of grace which he has bestowed upon them, enabling them in the end to reach heaven. My dear faithful, the sacred heart of our Lord is the best, the most loving of all hearts on earth, and it is still the best and most loving of all hearts in heaven. And we are to have confidence in that divine heart and bring all of our wants and necessities before his throne and have full hope of obtaining a favorable answer to our prayers. We should ask him especially for the spiritual goods which are necessary for the salvation of our souls. We should beg him persistently for true contrition for sin and the forgiveness of them, for the strength to overcome all temptations, for perseverance in virtue, for the exact fulfillment of our duties of our state of life and our faith, and finally for final perseverance in his love and grace. He will most assuredly confer these blessings upon us if we have a fervent desire for them and do what is required to obtain them. Ask also for what we need in our temporal welfare, and he will grant our prayers insofar as they are necessary and good and expedient for our eternal salvation. May we keep our heart free from all sinful inclinations, desires, and especially attachments, so that we may be conformable, our hearts may be conformable to the holy heart of our, sacred heart of our Lord, 
and that truly the words that he himself said will be applied to us. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God. May God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.